Our last interview tonight is with somebody I've known for very close to 30 years, Mr. Stanley Tucker, who four or five years ago retired from long service as a science teacher in Little Falls High School. And I'm real pleased to bring to you Stan. Stan? How are you? Fine, how are you? All right, pretty good. Did you get drafted or did you enlist? Are you kidding? I figured you got drafted. <laughs> <laughs> I was drafted. In fact, I, I was teaching out in Jasper, New York, in Stubren County, yeah. south of Hornell. And they allowed me to get all the way through nine months of my first year. Yes. And then came May, they decided they really needed me in that service. Oh, yeah. yeah. So uh, they wouldn't defer me. I couldn't get a deferment for a month to finish out the school year. I had to go. Uh, at that time, I was registered with a draft board in Palmer, Mass, because I was from Massachusetts originally. And they, Palmer carried, uh, covered the district, North Brookfield, the little town that I was in. And uh, when I wrote to him to ask to be deferred, I got this card back that uh, said that the vote on the board, I think, was something like five to one or six to one. Against you. Against me. Yeah. Now, guess who the one vote was that said I could stay? Probably your father. No. But he was the representative of my town, yeah. North Brookfield. You know? yeah. And I imagine this is the way it worked. You know, when they came up for North Brookfield, North Brookfield would say yes, and everybody else would say no. <laughs> so, so you go. And uh, so I had to report back to Massachusetts. What date was this? This was in May of uh, 42. 42. I graduated in 41, and I didn't quite get through the school year of 41. Although, fortunately, I kept my retirement in. So All when right, I retired I from New York that. State Teachers, yep. it starts with September of 1941. That's it. And uh, I retired in 81, which is what gave me the 40, 40 years. 40 years, that's so, right. So. But I had to pay my own retirement the first couple of years. Yeah, they did that. And then until the state finally took it over. Yeah. Well, anyway, from Massachusetts, I was inducted uh, in Springfield, Mass and shipped to Fort Devens, yeah. north of Worcester. I've been Maybe. there too, yeah. That's a fine it's institution. Yeah. No, I didn't think so. <laughs> <laughs> and I got properly shot, inoculated, in yeah. one thing or another, to the point where I didn't care where I was going, you know, what I was doing. And shipped down to Miami Beach. By train? By train. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the one's flying then. Uh, and stayed in about 10 hotels down there. I can remember the first one was Bon Air, a, a little hotel. Yeah. And about every week or so, we'd be moving around to a, a different hotel. And uh, I'll say this, I don't, of course, the Army, the Air Force, this was an Air Force uh, location for basic training. Yeah. And they took over the hotels there to house their personnel for basic training and, and what have you. And I personally can account for about 10 bathrooms in, in those hotels that I will guarantee were absolutely spotless when we cleaned them. We cleaned them. We cleaned them. Yeah. And uh, they were never cleaned you know, before or since by any chambermaid. I'm, I'm not sure. like that, no. Uh, not not, not the GI style. style. Not the GI yeah. style. And uh, I'm supposed to take the basic training. At that time, I was interested in phys ed work. And so uh, I got a job, a job an assignment, with the permanent party. Oh, okay. Uh, down on the beach as a phys ed instructor. Okay. And so forth. So technically, I never did complete basic training. Uh, I did a little bit of marching up and down. There was the municipal golf course there. We'd go out in that. And this was in June. Uh, by the time I got down there. And uh, Miami Beach is not the place to be in June. July no, anything, or August. Anything south of Virginia tends to get a little warm for right. the northern courts. Yeah. And then uh, when it came time, I uh, applied for officer candidate school at, at Miami. And uh, fortunately was accepted and ended what is called OCS down there. The 90 day a 90 day school. wonder, three months from January to March, I think it was March 3rd. So uh, Clark Gable went through there, but he wasn't there at the time. I'm trying to think now who uh, was 
one of the big shots there. He was one of the core officers, and uh, he was a music man. What's his name? Preston Robert Preston. Robert Preston okay. was going through at that time, and yep. he was a, he got a real, real good appointment there as a student officer. And uh, I went through that in administration, Air Force administration, yeah. which entitles you to. Well, you could either run a phys ed program, or you can run a mess hall, or uh, you could be a personnel officer, yeah. or anything like that. So, uh, from there, I went out to uh, Salt Lake City, again by train, yeah. and uh, was stationed at the air base in Salt Lake City, which was a replacement depot yeah. for the Air Force, and they would send personnel in and out. And I was working with the phys ed program there for a while. And then uh, from there, I was sent over to Kearns Field, which was also associated with Salt Lake City. Uh, I forget now just how far away it was. And that was with the 2nd Air Force, which was a training air force for B-17s. And uh, so all in all, I spent about uh, a year in Salt Lake City. And then uh, in the spring, I guess it was, uh, I went from March through to practically the next March, I guess. I was reassigned down to Almogordo, New Mexico, with the Air Force Base down there, which oh, is the second okay. Air Force. Base. Yeah, I was starting to come into some. And they were, again, training, uh, well, they were training B 29s. Yeah, they were a brand new plane. Yeah. Right, and yeah. that's where, of course, the the train, uh, the uh, plane for that bombed uh, Almogordo, or uh, bombed yeah. Japan, yeah, came yeah. from. Yeah, Nola Gay, right, was the right. Name of so it. forth. I used to have a picture of that. Yeah. Yeah. I never knew the gentleman or the plane that was there, but of course, I was the most I ever did was fly a desk around the base. At that time, I was reassigned to administration. And I was a personnel officer, and a supply officer, and what, what have you. And um, I spent about a year there. And the most memorable thing that happened there, I was uh, I was on duty as officer of the day. And uh, at the headquarters, I got this call from a guy, and he says, "This is so and so." He was some civilian out there. He says, I want you to tell your commanding officer. He says, who are you? I said, Lieutenant Tucker. I was a second lieutenant, which I remained practically throughout the war. So he said, I want you to tell your commanding officer to tell the pilots to stay away from such and such an area. There are planes are flying over there, and we don't want them over there. So I said, yes, sir, I'll tell him. And I left a message. Well, shortly after that, the atom bomb went off. Yucca Flats. Over in outside of Almogordo. Yucca Flats, whatever yeah. they call it, yeah. Right. And apparently that's why they didn't want any planes, training planes flying over there, because yeah. that's where they were testing the one thing. Or another. Well, it was kind of amusing because the morning it went off, I didn't hear anything. I, I wasn't aware of it. I wasn't on duty particularly. But it was uh, the guys around the base. Oh, gee, I remember hearing that. You know, oh, yeah, the thing first that. Time we were probably there. about a hundred miles away from it. Probably really, couldn't hear really where the anyway. base was. No. And I didn't hear any ground shake or anything. But uh, a lot of people suddenly recalled that they heard this noise and saw the flash and so forth. And uh, that was a small one, anyway. So probably. yeah, yeah, well, that was the first one. That was a trial one. Yeah, that they, they set off. And I stayed there about a year. In fact, I stayed there until shortly before the uh, surrender of the Japanese. The uh, v, uh, I guess it was down there that we celebrated uh, VE Day yeah. and so forth. And uh, then, of course, the war in the Pacific took over. And uh, from there, I was assigned as a replacement to the 20th Air Force uh, in Guam, out in the middle of the Pacific. Yeah. And uh, so 
went to Seattle, which was the port of embarkation. Yeah. And we were getting ready to embark, and lo and behold, the surrender was signed on board the Missouri. Right. Before yeah. we even took off from <laughs> Seattle. <laughs> And I figured I was stuck for the <laughs> duration because I didn't have any combat stars or anything else. I had a little bit of time. And, uh, but you go where you're told. And we took an old victory ship, one of Mr. Kaiser's special. Uh, those days. ones they were built in seven days? Yeah. Well, yeah. It took a lot longer than that to go across the Pacific. I'll tell yeah, you that. I imagine. I think they made all of four and a half knots. I sailed out of Seattle and I'm on a turkey oh, yeah. too, about probably seven, eight years well, later. Well, you know what it's like then. Yeah. And, uh, 18 days to Sasebo, Japan. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I couldn't tell you the, the time, but I, I know we stopped at Hawaii and we had a layover there, fortunately. And uh, we were able to get out, at least the officer personnel there, that in this replacement group because uh, they had officer replacements and they had enlistment replacement and one thing another. And of course that was one of the advantages of having an officer rank. We were able to get off the boat and visit Hawaii. So I had a chance to see Waikiki Beach yeah. and a, a little bit of downtown Honolulu. It was dark obviously at night and so forth. And that's the only time I've been there. Uh, we didn't have a chance to see Pearl Harbor or yeah. any, any of the damage that was done. I was probably pretty well cleaned up by that time. Anyway. Yeah. And I guess it's a little distance away. I have to check the map. Well, and, no, I there. and I think it was about a night was all we were there, and then we took off and we ended up in Tinian. Yeah, that's where one of the atomic uh, yeah. bomb run planes uh, took off from them. Right. Yeah. yeah. And that was an important air base there uh, for the 20th Air Force. They, uh, it was in the Marshall Islands. There was Saipan, there's Tinian, there's Guam, and there's a couple others. Yeah. And they had uh, airfields on there, which they were using to fly the 29s over Tokyo yeah. and, and so forth. And of course, they were pretty messy in getting in there. There were still caves around. We would drive around. We never saw any Japs, but there were rumors that Japs were still there back at the boondocks of the islands out in the caves and one thing or And, uh, <coughs> but we never saw them, fortunately, because we had no arms. Uh, as yeah. as uh, administrative personnel, we didn't even carry a pistol. Didn't even have a 45 or anything? No. As a matter of fact, I think we had to turn it in. When we, we, we carried it over on the boat, and we had a carbon. We had no 45, but we all carried a carbon. And as soon as we got there, we had to turn it into supply. And uh, we never had any arms with us. The only time we received arms was when we would go on guard duty or something like that. Then you were yeah. given a piece to walk around with or something like that. Probably that was a small island, wasn't it, Tinia? Yeah. Relatively small. You could drive around it in a few hours. Uh, we we get a jeep. By that I see several officers. We get a jeep and we we'll, we'll drive around and view the countryside and so forth. They're beautiful islands in the sense that there are no reptiles, there are no snakes, and not too many insects. Uh, if there were, I think that they were pretty well sprayed out. The government just and the late DDT was new then. A lot of stuff on it, so that. Uh, uh, there was practically no insect problem, and uh, the other nice thing was you didn't have to worry about snakes in your bed or anything like that. Uh, when we arrived there, the, <coughs> the worst part of the whole thing, we arrived just in time for a uh, typhoon. Oh, yeah. And uh, we, we got off the boat and were anchored in our Quonset hut there, and this typhoon struck, and so for about three days we just hold up in there while the wind blew and the rain flew and one thing or another. And unfortunately, uh, shortly after that, one of the kids, one of the enlisted men was down by the uh, coral offshore fishing and he slipped off the coral 
and got caught in the wave action. That was shot. Yeah. And the guys that were with him couldn't save him. And so he was lost. And I was appointed one of the summary officers to uh, conduct the investigation of the death and take care of the belongings and so forth and send back to the family. And that was the most notable, if you want to call it notable, event that was there. The rest of it was all routine administration staff and stuff. And then, um, after due time, my years of service caught up with me, which was, by that time was adding up to about four years. Yeah. Because I, I went into 42, and this was 46. And so I got enough points to come back. Yeah. And uh, even without uh, any real combat service, as I say, I, I wasn't any closer to combat there than I am here. Well, wow. sometimes I wonder right here, yeah, there have been days. Well, I, uh, you get a little <laughs> combat around. <laughs> but uh, not quite that serious when it was really going good. No, you weren't there when they had the A-bombs there. They dropped. No, they had them. already dropped. I don't think that we had any left in, in, in reserve. Uh, we were bluffing after those two fell. Well, I don't I think understand. there was any need to do any bluffing. I think they were convinced by, well, two by, by about that enough, time. I think. I think they could have whipped up more if they felt they needed them. But I know at that time they were running uh, flights over Tokyo. And if you really wanted to, you could get a, a flight on a B-29 over to uh, fly over the area to see the damage of the atomic bomb. Did you go? I never took advantage of it. I don't know what kind of uh, pull you'd have to have to, to do it. I didn't have much then as I have now, so I, I never pushed it. And uh, took a Navy ship back from Saipan. We went over to Saipan, and that was where they rotated us back to the States. Yeah. And there's all the difference in the world between a Navy ship and a, and a victory ship. A yeah. ship would have gone. We came back in good speed. and decent style and um, landed in uh, San Francisco, I believe, yeah. and again came across the country by plane back to Fort they Devon. Flew you oh, no, no, no flight. Oh, no, train no. again? Train all train the way again. back, yeah. yeah. Five days cross country? At least, yeah. at least. This was a troop train. Oh, and well, they take you are off the siding for anything of any importance to, to yeah. go on through. Came back to Devons again yep. and was discharged in, uh, in March, I think it was again, in, in the spring, I know, of 46. And went back to Jasper teaching. Jasper, in, in New York. York. Jasper, New York. Why don't you come here to Little Falls? <coughs> in 48. Yeah. Stayed there through uh, 48 and then came here. And uh, that's been it. So, you know. You do as, you, as you're told, and that's right, the way yeah. it, it turned out. But for yeah. me, it was more of a lock than, than anything else because a I lot of people never left the United States. I remember they would cut orders, you know, and so and so going to the Far East Command, and some people going to Europe and things. Yeah. And I remember on the orders that they gave me, there were a couple of guys who were assigned to Fort Niagara yeah. up here in Niagara Falls, an anti-aircraft unit. The Chinese didn't even have an air force. See. And I said, boy, this would be hard duty to take. I don't know how I could stand something like that. Did you ever keep in correspondence with any people you knew in service? Well, I still, uh, we exchanged cards with a Kellerman from New Jersey. Yeah. And uh, there's a fellow um, in North Carolina that Edith and I went down and visited several years ago and saw him. Uh, but that's the only contact we've had with, with any. See, one thing about this type of work that I was in, you don't make the close contact. Now, when you're with a crew or a unit, yeah, then right. you, you're really tight. Yeah. But here you're shifting around from, from group to yeah, group. Yeah. Well, the, the bomb squadron that 
I was associated with over in Tinney, and I was a replacement. Now, those guys that were there when they were bombing and in contact, you know, they had definite feelings They'd about each other. They've been together probably for and a long time. you guys, uh, Johnny come lately, so yeah. <laughs> they come with as, as replacements yeah. so that uh, you don't establish the... Uh, well, when you got out of service, you didn't have to take the GI Bill. You were already educated. Well, I used it for a master's degree. Yeah, I used it for a master's degree in Boston, which was a big help. So, you were you know, married when you were in service? No, no. no. Uh, later on in, in uh, Jasper, Edith came up from Pennsylvania she to, taught, teach, school, to yeah. teach there in the same little central school. They had all six seniors in their senior class when they graduated. Six seniors. Six yeah. seniors. And we met there and were married. I think a lot of people, not to digress, a lot of people when I first started teaching in the 50s, came from uh, uh, out of state. Uh, let's see, Leon uh, Craiger came from out of state, didn't he? Right, he was from Pennsylvania. Leon Castleman. I guess Remember so. him from yeah. Pennsylvania and like that. Because of the higher salaries. Well, at that time, now they don't do that uh, New York State things. was more attractive salary-wise. Yeah. And in my case at that time, when I went over there, I was interested in...